Dribble jump is hard though because you got this hop like, so you have to do that one is you have to do nine steps. So if you want to jump off that foot, you have to start with this foot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And you gotta go before a white line, you gotta hop, smooth, jump. Yeah, you have to jump off. I did I tried hard. triple jump. I wasn't very good at it though. Um, I actually did Anton's race. The mile, that was my, my race. Who else is in track? Is it you two? Uh, well, Tyler is. Tyler is. He's in DC. Yeah, okay. Um, how was everyone's weekend? Good. Good. Oh, oh, good. I got a sign right now. Really bad. Carson. It's fun to see. Good, thank you. Oh. Um, it was beautiful. Like, it was cold though. It was, it was very windy on Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Saturday was super windy. And yesterday was beautiful. Mm -hmm. Did anyone do anything fun? Oh, me. Why don't you do anything? We got 65 from the house. Oh, yeah. Did you bring your parents' car? No. Oh. Can you? Yeah. If you think of it, that would be awesome. 65 hundred beehives? 65. I thought it was like 65 hundred. Oh, that would be so. That would be way too many bees. How many times have we been stung? None? Wow. My dad got stung in the eye yesterday. Nah, is he alright? Yeah. No, thank you. I'm terrified of these. Carson, what did you do? Uh, well, on Sunday we had a bonfire, like really huge. We still have about, we have like 15 full trees that we have to burn still. And then on Friday, our we'll just get rid of the brush. Let's get the headphones on too. Um, it's, we just burned the brush yeah. yesterday. I got gotcha. you. Um, so on Friday, our 4x4 and 4x1 relay team, we were only together for 30 minutes to practice on fr uh, Thursday. And we were going up against teams that were together for a year from last year. Was this on the middle the Team here, yeah? Yeah. Okay. And uh, we took second. We beat teams that were together for the Seriously? Yeah. And these guys have been running together for a long time? Yeah. Congratulations. That's awesome. Chloe, what'd you do? On Friday night, I was over with Emily and Sophia. We were playing Sophia. Yeah. And then
four, two, one times eleven. Is that Hammers? Go ahead, Shane. Looks good. Yeah. 
too small. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, it is too small. It was an actual minor. Anyway, all right. So I have this. I want you to copy this down on your chart. Basically, don't go down all the way to this bottom one. Enjoy this last one because I'm going to give you not. I want the first one, top left box, to be X. Top middle, Y equals negative four X. Take away three. And then we have Y. And then x comma y, which is important. Now right below the x, it says negative 1. So what do we think we want to do with negative 1 to get the answer in here? Good. Replace it with x. Replace it with x. Right. So you have y equals negative 4 times negative 1 minus 3, positive 4, why is it positive? Good. Well, it's positive and two negatives. Two negatives, right. Two negatives, make it into a positive, take away 3 is 1. So therefore, we know that the y answer is 1. 1. So therefore, the point x is negative 1, y is positive 1. So the coordinate point will be negative 1, 1. I want you to complete the rest of the table. I want you to do it for negative 1, then 0. What's going to go here? Any ideas? Negative 2. Could be. I'm looking at what, what points do we have up here? 1. 1 and 2, right? Let's make this 1. And don't even worry about 2. Questions? Alright, so for x, sorry, let's do you guys in more time. Take about one more minute and we'll go over it. If you don't finish, no worries. Okay. 
So negative 7 is equal to y, therefore the point is 1 comma negative 7. And then we're, we're not even going to worry about the last one. But any questions on how to do that? Just see whether that's homework we're not working on right now. Alright, so these are just points that we could easily grab these and know what to do. Right? Do we all remember that? Now what we're going to be going into next is something we want to figure out how to graph lines. There are two types of functions. There are functions that look exactly like lines, and there are functions that look somewhat like lines, but by math definitions they're not lines. I don't know what really is. Could you read? That's that I was this was one I'm like, these are not lines, right? So tell me. Is this gonna be a line? Yes. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. No. 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 By math definitions, this is not a line because it's not a straight line. Alright? What we can call these are linear functions. What do we see in linear that we see? Yeah. Not here. Oh. We see the word line. Therefore, a linear function of lines. See, your ears have to be straight. What do you think these are called? Non-linear. Non-linear. No, so that's what we're going to be looking at today. But, but the non-linear one looks like an ear. So. <laughs> they don't have to lose. I was done. <laughs> well, actually, I wouldn't say you started off. Linear functions. <laughs> linear functions. Here's the definition of a linear function. Linear functions are graphs that have straight lines and represent a constant rate of change. How can you may write this? Linear functions are graphs that are straight lines and represent a constant rate of change. We, at this point, should totally know so well what a constant rate of change is. Who can support me on that? What is a constant rate of change? Brandon. Um, C rock. C rock, and what does that mean? Yeah. Um, that it, oh, the rate is a straight line. It's a straight line. Remember, a constant rate of change means that the rise, the run, rise, run, what is that? It's always the same. Path. It's always the same. And what is that that we've been looking at? Slope. 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 The slope is always the same. The, con the rate of change is constant. What is constant in China? It's constant and it's always the same. Well, it's always the same. All right. So linear functions are always straight lines. That represent a constant rate of change. You have a big area right below your sentence. I want you to write two coordinate axes. Here's one. Here's another. I want to make a coordinate axis. What's the, what do I always want to do? Label? Label. Label. What? So X and Y. Label. X and Y. Label. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, this is just kind of a quick reference so that we can go back and say, like, okay, I get what it's talking about. I'll just read this. And then, here's what we're going to be doing. We're making two different linear functions. And the best part is I'll let you do whatever kind of linear function you want. I'm just going to do this one. Is that a linear function? Yeah. It's a straight line. No, there's no curving. And if I could draw a straight line every time, would, would you say that the rate of change would be constant? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then another one doesn't really matter what kind. I'm just going to go straight across like that. Is that a linear function? Mm -hmm. You can make whatever two lines you want. Wait, they have to be a line? They have to be a line. Mm -hmm. But they have to be a line. I'm giving you two examples of what linear functions are. Okay. Is this a, now, let's go back to the definition. Uh, no, I'm going to hold on to that. Yeah. Great question. Is 
not a linear function. First, is it linear? Yes. It's a linear, it's a straight line. Is it a linear function? No. Well, how can we tell something's a function? Looking at this graph, linear or nonlinear? No. Nonlinear. See, it's going like this. It's like, whoa. So anytime, anytime you have a graph that's like this, as soon as you see it bending at all, it's not linear. Is it a function? Not a straight line. And then 
Let's make another example. Uh, straight up and down. Straight up and down? No. 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 We're trying to do a non-linear. Yeah. No, no, it's a linear relation. relation. Oh, yeah. Like That's still linear. Yeah, but what if you uh, did like up and then to the side, straight, all at right angles? You're almost never going to see graph that looks like that. When graph and graph, you're never going to see like swift right angles for this class anyway. You you may see something like this, like what the answer is saying C. What I'm going to do though, instead of a C, let's make a U. Square U. Do we have to make a U? Um. You can make it upside down U. That's what I mean. You can make something like that. Linear or non-linear? Non-linear. Function or relation? Relation. Non-linear function. 
You okay with that? Yep. Who's like Mr. Johnson? This is like the easiest thing I've ever seen in my life. It is. It's like really it's so hard. <laughs> I think Carlos is just saying that because he wants a test on it. Yep. Yep. Right now? No. <laughs> no. How about if we just read your question? So, next one. The x and y axis on our own here exactly, but here's the y. Here's the x. Oh, there you go. 
function or relation? Function. Whoops. This is a linear function. Any questions on that? Not bad, right? So, now that we know the difference between linear and nonlinear functions, let's take a zoom in on the linear functions. Is that where y intersects 
If I make a line. Oh, yes. Where would Y intersect this line? At wherever it touches the Y axis. The Y intercept is just where across where a line where something crosses the Y axis. So I want you to make a table right here, or not a table, a uh, small graph to the left of this, and draw a point right here, and then with an arrow point towards it, and say this is Y intercept. Y intercept. Yes, I know you were just trying to be funny, but that was perfect. <laughs> this is like Y intercepts the ball. Can, let me ask you this, guys. Can there be an x intercept? Yes. Yeah. Where do you think it's the x intercept? Whoa, probably where I intersect. Yeah. You're calling operated? Let's not go off. Where do you think the x intercept is? When the x intercepts it in the y. When the x, well, when the line hits the x axis, when it intersects it. This is going to be the x intercept. I want you to label both of these. X intercept. So we have a Y intercept, we have an X intercept. In our equation, are we dealing with a Y intercept or an X intercept? Y. Y. So what is Y intercept? What letter? B. B. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that this is my point B. B can be any number as long as it's on the y-axis. So B, that's what we're going to be dealing with with B. We're going to see an example on this that we're going to be using more. So B is the y-intercept. Any questions? Do we know what the y-intercept is there? Yeah. When the G intercept the ball. Perfect. All solutions for this linear function will fall on the line in the coordinate plane. Meaning, basically that the line is formed up with a bunch of points together. And then when you connect all the points, it forms a line. So all solutions for this linear function will fall on a line in the coordinate
definition of slope m to graph the remaining points. Use the definition of slope to graph the remaining points. Slope equals slope equals answer. I'll say it. Actually, I think I gave you some space right at the top, right? 
Yeah. Graph the linear function of the colon. Y equals? 10x plus e. Oh, oh. Oh my god. Uh, yeah. Y equals mx plus b. The example we're going to graph. Y equals 1 half x plus 2. What's my M in this one? Probably? So, what is it in the equation? One half. So, M equals rise over run. And for this equation, we have it to be one half. And then I have B. What is B equal to? Two. Two. What is B? Two. Two. What's the definition of B? It's uh, uh, y intercept. Y intercept. Uh, y intercept. So with this, look back at your steps. Where do I begin? Where do I begin before I go? The middle part. The middle. Or origin. Or Here's my origin. Then what's the first thing? I need to always start graphing it at the Y intercept. Look up at the steps. It says begin at your Y intercept. B. What is my Y intercept? Two. Where? For this two. problem. <laughs> two. two. Where's two on the graph? Oh, One, two. Here's my y intercept. This is where I begin. This is where I begin. Just kidding. This is where I begin. Let me write this. What's my rise over run? One half. One half. So I go up one. Over two, two. two, one, two. And but I need more points. So I'm going to go up one, over two. Up one, over two. Up one, over two. If you can't go that far, go back to your y-intercept. Do I go up one, over two, or down one, over two? Down one, over two. To the left, two. Down one over two. Down one over two. I just now once you have all that, you connect the dots. Yay! I love connecting. First grade. It's my favorite to do. Connect the dots. Oh my gosh. Connect the dots. Once you have that, the very last step, always label. What is the line? Uh, linear. Oh, linear. Linear, but it's y equals one and a half. Um, I don't know. <laughs> one and a half x plus two. I apologize that the handwriting is so tiny. But always label your line to be y equals one half x plus two. Does it keep going? Yeah. Do you think it would keep going if we had a bigger graph? Yes. Yeah. I'm not going to show that it would keep going. Arrows. Arrows on either way. Or you just keep drawing. Guys, if you just start to back up, that's going to bring your eggs off. My favorite.